Welcome to the Expanding Worlds podcast. I'm your host, Deborah Caldo. This episode, I'm talking to Solly Lazarus, who is based in London and provides support services for families who have children with ADHD and autism. Solly talks about a variety of issues, from education to self-esteem to what to do if you're a frazzled parent. It was also interesting listening to Solly talk about letting our children have choice choice in some of the activities you might do at home, for example, because often at school, they don't have a lot of choice. And we stumbled upon this solution in our house some time ago. And to be frank, we still struggle with remembering to let our daughter be the chooser. And some of those choices aren't always things that we all want to do. Certainly when Solly talks about the problems that can arise when one child with additional needs is perceived to be getting choices that siblings don't, it resonated but we continue to work on finding a way that keeps everyone happy. Of course, you know I'm kidding a bit there when I say that, because at the end of the day, one person is always going to feel a bit hard done by. But the simple reality is that, like Solly says, if giving our daughter more control is going to lead to a happier experience for all of us, then it's the right choice to make. I would be interested to hear your thoughts on this one after you listen to the podcast, and the best place to share those is on the Journey Skills Facebook page. Solly also talks a bit about the UK education system, in part from her many years' experience as a teacher. And Personally, I agree with some of Solly's views, especially around the idea that the system, at least here in the UK, is pretty archaic. I'm not really sure when my daughter will find her times tables that useful, because she's already pretty adept at finding the calculator on her smartphone. We've already written a fair bit about the importance of technology in helping drive our daughter's quest for independence on the Journey Schools website, and I really believe that this will open up a lot more opportunities for young people with additional needs. So it seems to make sense that we should be doing a better job of integrating technology into education in a way that helps young people imagine their independent future. Solly also talks about her role in supporting parents, and she has two main tips for parents, which is taking time for yourself and finding a support network. Again, these have come up before, but maybe we all need to be reminded now and then. Anyway, let's hear from Solly. This week, I'm talking to Solly Lazarus of Yellow Sun, and she's a coach and trainer who supports families who have children with ADHD and autism. Welcome, Solly. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about Yellow Sun and yourself. I have uh, been a teacher for 30 years and my son has ADHD and he's now 29. But when he was little, it was very difficult. It was very tricky. And when he was eight, he was diagnosed with ADHD. So from a personal point of view and a professional point of view, my life led me into the to the world of ADHD and autism. So your organisation, what exactly do you do? with Yellow Sun? I am supporting families, um, first of all. Parents really are very lonely. What are some of the issues that come up and what can you... What do you say to people? Yeah, the, the main issue that comes up time and time again is children's self-esteem because from a very early age, all the professionals, all the adults around them will be expecting them to conform and to behave in a normal um, kind of way. And because our children, they, they are chemically, their brains are chemically different and they have not the, the capacity to sit down for 20 minutes. They will be naturally um, inattentive they will interrupt, they'll be disorganised and those are natural traits. So from a very early age, they're at school, they're at the childminder, there's a babysitter, there's after school clubs and our children just find it really hard. So they're constantly being told off, they're constantly being branded as naughty and as a consequence of that, our children have such poor self-esteem because then they grow up thinking they're useless, they're rubbish, they can't do anything. And, that, and it's so easy to do. Uh, so for at school, at school, a teacher could give a child some responsibilities. You know, if they've got a natural ability, you know, let, let's encourage those. Let's make all the other children in the class see something amazing that they can do rather than be the child that's always being told off. But all it is is that a teacher has to look at the child and think he has different needs and I say he because more often than not our children with autism and ADHD are boys probably because they're more overt and we can diagnose them easier so look at the look at the child and just think what can I do differently just to make his world happier and if he's happy and calmer and, and is achieving and feeling secure then the impact on the rest of the children means that their learning can 
can move forward as well. So, Do you say the same things to parents then about building up confidence? Yes. So for parents... Again, it's have routines in, in, in place. So our children need to know exactly what's happening so we can use visual resources. Make children responsible so that you can reward them. Listen to their ideas, listen to their choices, because at school they have very little say in anything. Whereas at home, let them choose what route home we're going to go or where should we go, uh, what should we cook for dinner. You know, give them choice, give them power and then they'll feel valued and they'll feel listened to. Or if there's some compromise you've got to come to, like how long are they going to spend on the iPad, instead of a parent just saying, you know, I'm the parent, you stay on it an hour and that's that. And then after an hour, we have a huge battle. Have that discussion right at the beginning and say, well, what do you you think is reasonable do you want to do it to three levels or should we time you or let the child have some say in their life and quite often that is all it takes it just takes us giving just a voice so we listen to them they're more in control how does that then work with siblings because i speak from personal experience that that idea that one child would get something, get to do something or have a bit more, I suppose, power mm. is the right word, than the other one might. How does that work? I mean, siblings, again, is a whole big, huge area because our siblings are growing up with all sorts of emotions. They feel neglected. They feel it's not fair. They feel jealous. They feel guilty of their life that they're not struggling. One big thing with our cho- with us children is that they can't make friendships and that's really tricky. Whereas the sibling gets invited to birthday parties, has play dates, goes to after school clubs. So I think, again, you have to have a very open, honest discussion with everybody in the family and just say, if we want to go out and as a family, go to a restaurant and have a calm, lovely meal, then the little one with um, ADHD or autism has to choose. And and that's just how it is. We all have various things that make our lives happier or make things tick along without stress. And it, and if just making somebody in control of choosing makes everybody else calm and happy and makes the whole family experience nicer, then why not? On the other hand, I think we have to then really make sure that we're giving the sibling a huge amount of positive attention as well. So have special days just with the sibling. Again, I think this whole thing is about listening and talking and openness and and giving everybody just a say. And I think if a sibling says it's not fair, the the answer is you're right, it's not fair. And what can we do about it? Again, have that discussion. How can we make it fair that everybody gets gets their way, gets a choice? I I think we need boundaries. I think we need rules. And I'm not suggesting that child gets away with hitting or rudeness or swearing you know we have to have agreed boundaries and agreed rules and agreed consequences and those go for every every child in the family it's like a negotiation isn't it and I, and I think that's where where it comes we we want our child to feel empowered empowered that they're listened to and they feel valued at home because at school they won't be feeling any of that Unless there is an amazing setup at school and they are felt valued, sometimes home is the escape, you know, and the place where they can feel safe. We, they, they need to be in both environments, um, safe and, and feel listened and valued. Do you think, though, because school can sometimes be sitting, fitting in, so in one way, because you have to fit into the, yeah. what the school wants, do they then, I go, for want of a better word, play up when they get home more? I hear that an awful lot, yeah. Because also some of our our little girls with autism actually keep it in a lot and and, um, particularly with all this sensory overload and and communication difficulties and really not making sense of the world. So they're actually very, very quiet at school and then they come home and where where there's safety, yeah, they then erupt, which is why some, some of our parents are just completely frazzled and exhausted. Again, it's sort of educating everybody to understand that. So first off, school needs to cope with the problems at school so that she's not feeling so tense and anxious and worried about things so that when she comes home there's no need to explode so if we deal with school better but then similarly at home create an atmosphere again where she's going to be listened to and feel safe and it's important to know that somebody's fighting your corner the more we can educate everybody that they're not being naughty they're not being stubborn this is how it is 
some children just need things to be done in a certain way, in a certain order. They can't help it. You can't make them. It's like making a left-handed person right-handed. You can't do it. You have to adapt your environment, adapt your world, adapt your response. So I say this a lot to my families as well. The, the onus is on us. The onus isn't on the child to change. The child can't change. So the onus is on us to change our response to a behaviour or to change an environment to make it that it's going to be okay. Because in the end, we want our children to be happy and to be confident and to be able to make social relationships. So it's up to us to make all these things right. Do you think then it's too much of putting a, a round peg in a square hole then? Because we're trying to, or people are trying to make children have, are on the spectrum do what's normal yeah i mean this is one of my huge bugbears as well is our antiquated victorian system of school why are we still teaching children to learn times tables why are we ch teaching children skills that they're just not not needing we, we don't need handwriting we, you know we need to write but we waste an awful lot of time handwriting we're, we're, we've got phones and apps and we're not even going to write anymore we're even going to just talk so why are we why are we waste wasting our time and it's just not a system that is suiting our 21st century. Do you think technology will help people who are on the spectrum then? Yes, 100% because a, a lot of our problems are organisation so we can have checklists, we can have reminders and we can have talk to text technology. There'll be apps that will, will help us, visual signs to show I'm, I'm feeling upset, I'm feeling anxious because again some children find it difficult to express their emotions so 100% technology is the way forward and, and the biggest one as I said before our children find it really difficult to make social relationships but online the online world is where they're they're happy and they're comfortable so this is something even in the last year I'm having different conversations with so originally I would say perhaps we need to curtail how long a child is spending online but now I'm coming around to thinking actually if they're making relationships if they're on an online game and they're talking so they're typing and as long as they're safe and I think the only way we allow it to happen is if parents say well I'm going to check and I, because I want to keep you safe and say the rules well you must never go to meet you must never say your real name you must not say your school name I think being online and being in group chats and finding people who are like you is, is a great way forward for our children at the moment we're talking about young children aren't we but mm. I, I'm we're particularly interested in what happens when you hit 18. Yeah. What happens there? It's very, very tricky. And I think parents have just got to keep up to date. Parents are, are behind our children and are behind our teenagers. So I think we need to keep parents involved, keep them educated. The only thing you can do is just keep training young adults and our teenagers to say you have to be vigilant, you have to be careful. If you have a, a family where you are open and you communicate and you're building up that trust... And you're building up that understanding that you're there for them and you're watching their back, then maybe they'll be more likely to, to listen and, and to take your advice on board. But there's no guarantees, you know, a, a 16, 17 who is experimenting as all teenagers do, you know, and we want them to experiment. That's part of being a teenager. We just have to just equip them with, with the right language. We have to role model the right language. We have to say, particularly to our girls, it's okay to say no. We have to empower our girls. But I think we also need to send out that message that you you can be strong, you can say no. So similarly, our boys, we can train them that they don't have to be macho. It's okay to show your emotion. It's okay to support one another. We need to build up their self-esteem. We need to make them feel amazing about themselves. We They need to feel that they can do whatever it is that they want to do but if they fail it doesn't matter it's okay you just then try something else with the online relationships then how that sounds great and mm. it's nice for them to develop those skills but how can they take those skills do you think and then move it into more face-to-face -face, into personal i'm not suggesting they meet people that they met online yes but are there skills that they learn online do you think that they can transfer to it's it's just having practice isn't it of how you would talk to somebody. Some of our children are very, very isolated, um, so they don't get practice. 
all they do is they make mistakes and then children run away or adults run away and then they don't get invited anywhere and they need other people around them to say don't say that you know you shouldn't you shouldn't talk to people like that you shouldn't ask about that I mean I we, we had to specifically say to my son when he started work you don't ask people how much money they earn or you don't say to people anything about their personal life until you know about them a little bit better sometimes we actually have to teach our children those skills and maybe online they've got more opportunity to to practice those and if somebody leaves the chat room it's not as devastating as if somebody runs away from you you know and then somebody else will come into the chat room and we hope some of our children will learn and think well maybe I won't say that again because this person left but I know personally speaking to parents that children who are now going online and are in chat rooms are are feeling happier and they they say they have friends whereas before before we had this ability to to have friends in real life there was nobody and our children get that you talk about frazzled parents and we've been really talking about how we can help the children Mm. what advice would you give a frazzled parent for themselves what can they do to defrazzle (laughs) yes well one of the things i say is take time out every single day and do something for yourself without feeling guilty. Even if your day is work, home, children, you know, even if you think you do not have a minute, you need to find it. You listen to some music or you take control of the control and watch TV, watch a programme you love or go for a walk or get up earlier and go go for a walk or stand in the garden and do something for yourself to make yourself feel better every single day. And then the other thing is get support because it is very lonely. I I was incredibly lonely when my son was at primary school. Um, I didn't know anybody else who had the challenges I had and I thought I was the only one. And it's very hard. It's so empowering talking to somebody else who is going through what you're going through. And more often than not, you just need somebody just to say, I get it. I really understand. I know the challenges. So I think, yeah, so for frazzled parents, we really have got to take time out and get support. Just to finish up, we talk a little bit about uh, your website. My website is solly-lazarus.com and that is sort of the the hub for everything I do. So I blog. I also have an online training course for children with ADHD. There's some free training videos. One is how to stop the rudeness. I also have on Facebook, I have a page, Yellow Sun, where I share some interesting articles. But more importantly, I have a closed Facebook group and I do a live Q&A every Wednesday evening. And that's great. Um, And as I said before, we need support. We need to know we're not alone. Okay, Solly, thank you very much for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you for asking me. Key takeaways, give away some control to your children where you can. Take time to re-energise yourself every single day and get support where you need it. As always, if you could leave a podcast review, that would be great. And if you have any recommendations for guests or for topics you want me to talk more about, then you can message me on Instagram or Facebook at Deborah Caldo, or you can email podcast at expandingworlds.com.